Hello, this is Steve Gauck, agronomist with Bex Hybrids in southern Indiana. And today I'm taking a look at some soybean fields. Planters have rolled pretty hot and heavy over the last couple weeks on corn and beans, and a lot of the beans are starting to emerge. So it's a great time to go out and evaluate some stands and make some decisions on how well did the planter do, how good a stand do I have, and are there any issues I can address. So in 15 inch rows, I still like to use a tape measure to check stands. It does take a little longer, but if you lay out a tape measure at 17 and a half feet and then count two rows and add them together, that'll give you an average. So if you have 60 on each, each row, you add them together, you got 120,000 population. Uh, it's kind of an example. So uh, that's that to me is a nice way to do it. You get a large representative area of the field to take some stand counts. Uh, 30 inch rows still do 17 and a half feet. Count one row and then for a drill we still like to use a hula hoop. But as you're out there evaluating the stands you make a decision, okay, I, I've counted what's up. Let's take a look and see what didn't make it out of the ground and what happened. In a lot of scenarios in soybeans we see this right here. We'll see where the top of the bean got caught, had a lot of push, end up breaking a neck. So here we've got a broken neck, and that soybean is not going to survive. In this case here, digging around, we found a bean that did not get all the way into the ground, and it swelled but did not sprout, did not have enough moisture. So planting depth or down pressure on the planter was a bit of a concern from that standpoint. So shallow planting, is a concern in soybeans. A lot of us do plant shallow. We've talked a lot in Beck's PFR research about how planting deeper, even close to that inch and a half, is important uh, to maintain high yield. So here you see a case where we planted shallow, we've lost that bean. You can actually dig the soybeans and know where your planting depth was. So this first major crook right here is, is where the planting depth would have been on this particular soybean plant. Now, why that's important is that helps tell, all right, how deep was my planter set, how well did it work, but also a majority of our nodulation is going to happen right here at this area. So we want that down in the ground, down in moisture, down in cooler temperatures throughout the summer to maximize nodulation. Now we've got plants coming up and we're starting to decipher, okay, how well do they look? So here's an example of a very healthy soybean. We've got our two cotyledons out right here and our unifoliate leaves are starting to come. So an example of a good, healthy soybean. No disease, it's all white, dark green. Now when you're looking at these and you do find a diseased one, a lot of times what you can tell is if, if it's brown or mushy and it's brown from the ground level down, it's most likely some type of a seedling blight. If it's brown or dying from the ground level up, a lot of times that can be some herbicide damage. Now, as you're looking around, you may find a soybean that looks very similar to this. We've lost both cotyledons. Well, is that plant going to survive or not? Well, here we see that the cotyledons were broke off, but the neck wasn't, and we've got unifoliate leaves starting to come out. So those unifoliate leaves will go ahead and grow, produce a bean. This one will survive and not suffer any yield loss. Here as we move down the row, we've got another example of a broken neck from that standpoint. As we move over here though, I've got one that something has taken the, taken the cotyledon off. So I have one cotyledon, and again, have unifoliate leaves coming out. This one's going to survive. One thing you will notice out here, I showed you this bean. It's got good green cotyledons all the way around. This one here, we've got some browning on the cotyledons. Uh, as we look here, you'll see brown right around the edges of this cotyledon. Now these beans were treated with Olivo seed treatment. We use Olivo to control sudden death syndrome in soybeans. Very effective chemical. But one of the things that we do see during the spring when they come up is what we call this halo effect. This brown right along the tips of the cotyledons. No reason to be alarmed, nothing to worry about. That's just a symptom of it metabolizing the Olivo. No yield loss um, from that standpoint. So here you'll see on, on this one, maybe a little more extreme, but again, the plant is still growing normal. Nothing to worry about from that standpoint. So overall, the beans look pretty good. Haven't seen too many issues from insects or even herbicides because we haven't had the rain. 
Now weed control on the soybeans is something I want you to pay close attention to as we use a lot of group 15s in soybeans and we need a good half inch of rain to activate them. And they're gonna control the weeds that are coming up. Um, but once they're up, they will not. So we'll have to watch for our post applications. But overall, some quick things here to look at in soybeans. Hope everybody's having a great day. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks.